that gave me opportunity to spread the word of God today. And as you all know, I'm a, a student from Union College, and I'm doing internship here at Phoenix Central. And I'm really excited that I received the opportunity to do my internship here because I've been attending at this church since 2009. And I went out for school for three and a half years. And I'm kind of tired of snow and cold in the, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. And they assigned me to do a student pastor or an internship in Minnesota, St. Paul. That's more worse. I said, oh, come on, let me talk with you know, central people. Hopefully they have mercy and loving <laughs> compassion for me. And I emailed David. Well, he did an amazing job. I don't know how. But yeah, finally I'm here. And I'm so happy. And today I want to say thank you. My brother yeah, is here to support me, I think. And uh, yes, also I see friends and guests here. We all, you are welcome to Phoenix Central. May God bless each one of you. And today, as I've been to the Sabbath school class, and as I hear what people are saying in the morning here, once before I heard that, I was wondering, the sermon that I'm going to preach today, is it okay? Will it be relevant to the people who are going to be listening? I keep asking God, God, show me a sign. But whatever I heard this morning, it's about my sermon. So I'd be like, thank you, God. So now I am okay. Now I am going to do it. This is the answer from God. Amen. Well, let's pray. Let's bow our head for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your blessings that flow in like a spring of water upon us, Lord. Each and every day, Lord, we can't count it over and over again, for you are such a loving God. And Father in heaven, we invite Holy Spirit to come and dwell among us as we are going to study about your word, Lord. And Lord, also let the Holy Spirit will guide me, speak through me, and reign in me, Lord. And let the word that I'm going to speak be a blessing to every each one of us here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 When I was in refugee camp, there was an elderly barber who often cut my hair. Every time he cut my hair, he had a story or a testimony that he shared with me all the time. And the story is about how he became or becomes Christian from Buddhist. Or the story is about how other people become Christian from Buddhist. So many stories he told me, but all of those many stories I want to share you one story that always, always in my head. So, one full moon, one of the full moon night, and with a clear sky, there was an, a Buddhist abbot or a monk was sitting next to the Sridagong Pagoda, uh, you will see in the picture over there. This is the current one. Long time ago, that this I'm talking about many years ago was not as shiny as this, but quite close. But this Buddhist monk, as he was looking up at this pagoda that newly or just finished making, like he just finished making it, and he was so pleased 
about what he has done. And he was smiling at it, and he was so proud of, so proud about it. And as he was looking at it, he looked around to the city, and he doesn't see anything like as bright as his pagoda that he has built. So he was so satisfied with his pagoda that he has built. And this pagoda is today is the most valuable pagoda in the world. It's covered with a gold plate and 3,000, I mean 4,531 diamonds encrusted and 72 carat diamonds on the top, so which is uh, attracted many people in the world. Many pilgrims come and, you know, worship this pagoda. So as he was looking around to the city and he said, wow, there is nothing can compare to this pagoda. And as he was stroking his chin and smiling, and he suddenly uh, uh, turned his eye up to the sky. And he saw this phenomenal uh, bright or shiny moon. And he was shocked and amazed. He said, wow, I thought my pagoda was the brightest, you know, in the earth or in the Burma. But when he saw that moon, the brightness of that moon was way shinier than the pagoda. He said, he thought about himself. He said, if I am the one made this pagoda, if I am the one built this pagoda, there must be someone that made that moon. And from that night, that monk started do, doing research, began to do research about other religious books. He, do, he did one after another, one after another, book after book. He didn't find anything about creation story until he got a Bible and he opened it up, and surely enough, in the very first chapter, he found the story of what? The creation. And he eventually became a Christian. Amen. 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 So let's go together to the Bible. And Daniel chapter 3, I want to start reading it at verse 14. I'm reading a New King James Version. Daniel 3, chapter 14 to 18. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, or worship in the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at this time, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God? Who will deliver you from my hands? 16. The answer, the answer of the king. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from... Uh, from your hand, O king, 18, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, 
nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Amen. You all know the story in chapter 2, Daniel the prophet uh, interpreted the dreams, uh, the king, the dream of the kings, right? And in the, at the end of the chapter 2, this king, Nebuchadnezzar, praised God and confessed that God of Daniel is the God of gods, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords. When people are being blessed, they praise God. But when people are keep, you know, keep receiving blessing more and more, they changed. They said, they're proud of themselves. They do on their own ways. One of them is King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, very soon, how soon? I don't know. Very soon he forgot the blessing and the greatness of God. What did he do? He erected uh, his own likeness, image, and he commands every tongue, every nation, every kinds of people in his country to come and do what? Worship the golden image. And the Bible said, every single one bow down to the image because they, if they don't bow, they're going to be dying. They're going to be cast into the fiery furnace. They're going to be burned up. The reason they bow down, we all know, because they fear to die, because they have no other hope than, you know, follow the, the king order. And the, except there's three Hebrew men that doesn't, no, don't bow down. The reason the Hebrew young men know that the blessing or the position the job that they are having right now is doesn't come from the king. It's come from God, the one who lives higher position, who lives in the highest place, who looking down to the low. We don't care if we lose our job because when God gives us something, God can take it back. When God gives us something, God will give it more. We Believe in God, these three Hebrew men doesn't care. They stand phenomenally on their faith in their God. And so Nebuchadnezzar was reported that these three Hebrew men doesn't or don't bow down to your image. He was mad. He was in fury. He said, bring me those men. Bring me them right now. And they were there, and the Buchanan making sure that he doesn't believe what other people said. He want to hear it with his own ear. He said, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you are not going to bow down to my statue? Is it true what I heard? Okay, now I will give you another chance. This is, listen carefully, my friend. The Satan... When he tempts you once, if you refuse, he will again compromise you. Are you sure? Are you sure you're not going to do it? It's always compromised. So here the king said, are you sure? Here now I'm going to give you another chance. If you do not bow down this time, we're going to cast you to the Im immediately into the fiery furnace. If who is the God? Now he assaulted himself too much. He said, who is the God that will save you from my hands or deliver you from my hands? So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, Oh, king, don't do it. Don't waste your time. If this is your ultimate goal, if this is your intention, don't waste your time. Save it. We will not bow down. We are worshiping the God that highest in everything, the almighty God. We will never, ever betray him. We will worship him. And 
Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible said, his face turned red, his attitude toward this Hebrew people is changed immediately, and he ordered his soldiers to increase the fire up, you know the story, for seven times. When your faith is increasing, the trial is increased. When your faith is increasing, the amount of fire is increasing. Are you sure you're going to stay faithful to your God? Turn up the fire. Are you sure you will be faithful to your God? Turn up the fire. But the Hebrew young men believe God can deliver them whatever circumstance will be. Now many Christians think being Christian is blessing. Only they know about blessing. When, be, when they are uh, facing the trial and fire, the, the temptation, many Christians turn away from God because they didn't plan to face those things. They only know about being Christian. It's all about blessing. But now Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego they know that being Christian by be believing in God is not about blessing. It's about go suffer like Christ. Go through their life, whatever Christ is d going through. So now the king said to those strongest men to go and what? Bind them. So now it's very easy to throw some person people to the fire without burn, without binding. But this is kind of spiritual thing. When the chain of Satan, when the chain of darkness is binding you, uh, there is God that can break it away. Amen? Amen. So, these three men were being bound and being thrown into the fiery furnace. And now, the Bible says, because the heat is too high, the, uh, the fire is so hot, those who threw them into the fire, what happened to them? They would die because the flame of the fire killed them. So now Nebuchadnezzar is in, you know, intentionally looking at those three Hebrew young men. He said, his intention is to see the fire destroying those three young men. He's looking carefully to those three young men, but he didn't see what he was expected. He saw the three Hebrew young men walking inside the fire. Amen. And there is another person come and join them, yeah. which is the Son of God, the Bible said. Yeah. Now, if you think, the Nebuchadnezzar is the pagan uh, king. Never see God. Never see the Son of God. And, but he recognized the Son of God in the fire. I want to tell you, my friend, when you walk the way of God, when you treat other people the way of God, when you smile to those who never smile to you, when you love those who don't love you, for those people never see God, they will see God in you. Amen. So these three young men show God, the Son of God, with them. And Nebuchadnezzar was shocked. I just throw three people in there. Now I see four people. And that person, that people, the one that joining them looks like the son of God. And the Buchanan called that three Hebrew young men out and said, please come out. So when they come out, the king did a sniffing test or examined this Hebrew, uh, making sure that there's nothing uh, damaged on their body. But the king checked everything. There's nothing damaged on their body except the bound. God will break all the chain of the darkness that bound you all only when you invite God in you. So the king 
later confessed and declared to the whole entire Babylon nation that every single one must serve the to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God only, no any other God. So today, friends, you can make God known. You can make you can let other people see God in you, wherever you can be, where you are in work, wherever you are, you can make God known. Because God is the God of powerful God. So, and the three Hebrew young men, like I said, they didn't care what position, what job they will lose because they only care about God. Now later, they were promoted to the leader of the Babylon kingdom. So this is how God is working, friends. So you might be thinking when your employer told you if you're not coming to job on this day, you will lose your job. And you'll be like, what does Sabbath will do unto me? You know, what does keeping Sabbath will do unto me in this situation? Sometimes we think God will not be able to deliver us. But if you have faith, if you test God, God has a blessing more than what you can see. So in the last, I want to close with a story of I, I believe you all know Pastor Joel, uh, Pawa Mana, Pawa Nimana. I think uh, our auntie, no, Pastor Joel. I want to close with his story. He once lived in Michigan, Detroit, and he has a big, beautiful house. He has a beautiful luxury cars. He has a beautiful family two children and beautiful wife. They live in Michigan and he has a very good paid job which is he was an engineer. So he lived in Michigan and one day, I mean, yeah, he, one day he went to work and his employer came to him and said, Brother Joe, you, you, and we know that you've been working with us for three years already. But I never asked you something. You know, I never asked you a favor or anything. But today I want to ask you a favor, Brother Joe. Coming this Saturday, I want you to come and work for, you know, for that day. Because that day, we do need people to work. It's very important for us. So please come and work. And Pastor Joe said, okay, sir, since I've been to this company, since I'm the beginning I got hired, I signed the contract that I'm not going to work on the Sabbath. But you are asking me now to work on Sabbath. I can't and I will not work on the Sabbath. And the employer said, well, if you do not work on Sabbath, we will have to fire you. So I'll give you a chance to go home. You have a week to go home and think about it. Pastor Joel went home and talked with his wife. Oh, honey, you know, talk about whatever his bosses told him. And his wife said, honey, you never been working on Sabbath. But just one time, you know, one time, honey, just go ahead and do it. There's nothing God will forgive you. You know, re remember, we have a big house. We have a good cars. We have our beautiful children. We got to support them. You know, if you lose your job, imagine what's going to happen. And Pastor Joe doesn't like what he heard from his wife. And now Pastor Joe 
go and ask another friend, which is a pastor of Seventh-day Adventist. He asked, friends, you know, this is my situation. And his friend said, friends, you know, this is Seventh-day Adventist pastor. He said, ah, just one week. Just go ahead and do it. It's okay. God will forgive you. You know, in this case, what does it profit you to keep the Sabbath? What does it profit to you to believe in God? You know, you remember you have a house. You have a cars. Pastor Joe was shocked that he didn't expect he's going to hear uh, something like this from the Seventh-day Adventist friends. Pastor Joe went home and he stood in the Word of God. He, he, he stood in the Lord of God. The Lord of God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. If the God has said it, the God will seal it. Yeah. So Pastor Joe said, the house, the position, it's not from human, it's from God. If I believe in God, if I follow God, there will be a more blessing than whatever I, I see. So Pastor Joe said, decided, I will not go to work. Doesn't matter what's gonna happen. Doesn't matter what my family gonna react to me. I will not work. He called the employer, he said, Sorry, I cannot make it. I won't come. You know, eventually he got fired. In a few weeks, letters from the bank, I mean, mailed from the bank, giving them the day to get out of the house. And the letter from dealership said, this day, this day, I will come and collect the car. In a bit later, the whole entire family left the house and ran the apartment and have an a old car. And Pastor Joe's ex-wife, I'm going to say, was not happy about it. In a few months, she decided to leave Pastor Joe and married to a man who knows how to run business. <laughs> and Pastor Joe and the children separate. The children, one with Pastor Joe and one with the mother. Pastor Joe moved to Arizona and Pastor Joe start working on the ministry, the work of God, the one that he had the most hope. He has uh, a future hope. He invests his life for that. And now, Pastor Joe have over 2,000 members of Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, is an African people from Africa over around the United States. So he is the one we call it CEO, the, the founder of the African a Seventh Day Adventist, you know, group in the United States. He's everything. He's the head. God bless him for what he has. He's been faithful and true to God. And finally, he also received a beautiful wife who served the Lord, who encouraged him in the word of God. And he also he is very happy man right now. He is happier than when he was in Michigan. So today, friends, we can make, we can be a phenomenal for God to the one who doesn't know God. We can be the light to the, those who are in darkness. We need to be the shine our light up to those who needed the light, friends. So today, I want to make an appeal Today, friends, in the past, you may be the people that are ashamed to stand up for God. 
You may be people that put God in the behind. You may be people that for God, the blessing of God. Or you may be a people like Peter said, no, I don't know this person. Don't come and say, talk to me. I don't know this person. You may be those kind of people. But friend, today, if you want to say, oh God, I'm sorry. From now on, I will be the light for you, Father. I will be the light that being bright to those who are in the darkness. I'll be the light that uh, a benefit to those who needed it. Father, so if you are want to say to God today, I would like to, to stand and let me pray with you, friends. If you think God is the real source of blessing, if you think God is the one that provides blessing, today, friend, is the time to come to God. It's never too late to confess to God. Jesus is waiting to come. Jesus is waiting to be with you, friends. So let me pray together with you all. Heavenly Father, we want to ask you forgiveness for in the past, we might be a children that are ashamed and fail to lift up your name or to stand phenomenally for the truth that we have. But Father, today we are here to commit to you that we will be the children that will stand up for you no matter what circumstances is, Father. We want to be a children that be the light to the people in the darkness, Father. Always let the Holy Spirit to be in us, Father, so that we will have courage and strength to stand and to shine to those in the darkness, Father. And bless these children that are standing before you and touch their heart with the Holy Spirit that they will recommit their lives and their self to the, your kingdom and to your work and let them see and know that you are the true source of blessing, not the human, not the government, not anyone in this world lord just you father please bless them and guide them as they continue on their journey lord in jesus name we pray amen, amen.